Good morning, everyone from this side of the world. We are live in Leiden, the city of science for SF 2022. And this is the session for Euraxis Worldwide. My name is Jenny Elmako, one of the members of Euraxis Worldwide. You know, for the past days, we've been talking about how the EU has been promoting multilateralism, opening to the rest uh, of the world. And we have been clear that there is a need to cooperate with the best scientists in the world, wherever they are, to produce the best science and to turn them into innovation. And we will partner with countries and individuals, uh, researchers, even businesses, and other stakeholders from around the world so that we can have a vibrant research and innovation fabric and at the same time share values that we hold dear, such as, uh, such as gender equality, academic freedom, um, research ethics, um, open science, and evidence-based policy making. And so today we are very proud to introduce to you or reintroduce to you if you've uh, seen us or heard about us or attended our sessions um, from any part of the world, Euraxis Worldwide. And I will not talk a lot about it because my colleagues will do so, but I'd like to introduce to you who are in the panel live today and those who are joining us from different parts of the world. So first I'll start with the powerful lady on, on my left, my left, uh, she is Isabel de Moline from the Central Management of Access Worldwide. Perhaps, Isabel, you'd like to say some few words before I give the floor to the other colleagues. No, I will uh, rapidly give you the floor because I know we have little time. Uh, you are the, the, the most important people in the project. I'm only uh, coordinating the network, so I give them the floor very quickly. Thank you so much. And I'll introduce as well Tomasz Wielspolski. She, he is in charge of Euraxis in Korea. Hello, uh, great pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for having me. And my colleague, he, she is an institution in herself, a legacy, of course, of Euraxis worldwide, Dr. Susanna Renzo-Vasu, handling ASEAN. Thank you, Jenny. And I also want to introduce to you those who are joining us online. Uh, doctor, a newly, newly decorated doctor, Dr. Ahmed Malel. Uh, he is in charge of Africa, Euraxis in Africa. We have uh, Nishant Shandilia, who is in charge of Australia and New Zealand. Hello, guys. Um, Hal Dorgberg, who is in charge of China. Um, Charlotte Gravitz, uh, in charge of Brazil. Samrat Kumar in charge of India, Jackson Howard in charge of North America and Canada, uh, Judith Magyar uh, in charge of Japan, and did I miss anybody, guys? I hope. Anna, sorry, Anna. <laughs> Anna, of course, uh, together with Haldor in charge of China. So they're joining us, as you can see, from all sides of the world. Some of them have not slept just to be with us today. So we have a very exciting session. But before that, I'd like to encourage all of those, especially uh, joining us as an audience, to uh, join us for Slido. We have some questions on Slido. And if I could ask one of the organizers to to uh, please, do that. yeah, the question is already there. Which country are you currently based? So there's, uh, if you wanna join us and if you have done it for the first time, please go to slido.com and put the, the link or scan the QR code, hashtag S of 2021, is that an L? Yeah, L, Z or Z. Please tell us which country you are currently based in. So I can see that one participant is typing. <laughs> So for the rest, we would really love to see where you are from. So we'll give you uh, a minute. Italy is represented, yay. Germany and the others. I mean, I, if I had uh, internet connection, I would put the Philippines there, but uh, Belgium. Hello, Belgium. China, there you go. Wow. So we have some more some more answers coming in. Let's see where you, India, of course, India is here. What about the others? Luxembourg, wow. Very nice. And Singapore, yay. So we'll let that run. Um, we'll go to the next question, please. Which country, this is the same question. Can we go to the next question, please? Yeah, on a scale from one to 10, this is very important for us. How familiar are you with the work of your access, especially of your access worldwide? Please let us know. 
Here you go. Seven and eight and nine and ten. Ten, okay. Uh, a ten. Wow, twenty-five percent of ten. Seven point four. That's not bad. That's that's exciting. I, I'm very happy about that. So unacceptable seven point four. I think Isabel. Uh, we can work, uh, s of course, a bit more. We want to have a perfect ten, as with everybody. Uh, but yeah, that's the, that's great. Oh, but there's also a one. Okay, we'll talk to this person who said that she doesn't know or he doesn't know or whatever pronoun this person ascribes to doesn't know. So we'll. We'll figure it out, make sure. Next, uh, I think I have one more. What aspect of collaboration with scientists and researchers based outside of Europe is most interesting to you? So please tell us, you know, if um, what you would, how do you would like to collaborate? So just give us ideas. It will form a word cloud, so that's fine. Five participants typing, thank you so much. More so, six now. Let us know, because this is very, oh great, staff, ex so knowledge exchange, wider perspectives, very important. Staff exchange program, very good, thank you for that. Tackle global challenges, very important, and of course a focus of Horizon Europe, and of course the, the connecting uh, programs also of the EU, very nice. Uh, new scientific questions. Yes, we had a really nice exchange as well in the, during the pre-event of the Marisco Dobbs Akiri actions. So I'm very happy to see this here. Thank you so much. So just keep on answering, uh, you know, because we, we have a full program for you today. Uh, but this is very, very important to us. So thank you so much for participating. I think that's the last question. If I'm not, oh, there's one last question. Thank you. <laughs> what type of global activities would you like to see your access worldwide to organize? So please, if you want to have, I don't know, a phone party, maybe not, uh, <laughs> but give us ideas on what kind of um, interesting and innovative uh, exchanges or activities you would like to see us wherever you are uh, in the world. So please let us know, okay? Matchmaking is perfect. Yeah, we have that um, planned and we had a successful one. Again, a matchmaking events done and done. Yes, very good ideas. Thank you so much. It also actually affirms what we want to do. And we're very happy that uh, you are confirming that this is exactly uh, what we, we should do more of. Institutional tours, mm, very interesting. Uh, my colleague will be explaining to you one of the ways to do that actually. Um, success stories and best practices exchange, brilliant plan, yes, absolutely, we will do more of that. Please keep the, the answers going, we will go back to that. But now I'm very pleased to introduce to you our very first speaker. Um, he is uh, representing, again, the newly minted uh, doctor straight uh, from, from Africa, Dr. Ahmed Malel, I hope that I'm pronouncing your family name correctly, Ahmed, but welcome and thank you so much. The room, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, pleasure for me to present uh, today uh, Our Access Africa and I will share my screen. So it's okay? We can hear you, uh, but we're waiting to see your beautiful face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, first of all, um, I, uh, today I will present Our Access Africa and uh, I will present uh, myself. I am Dr. Ahmed Malel. I am the regional representative for Our Access Africa and uh, I am associate professor at the University of South Tunisia and I am a former national contact point for Horizon Europe and uh, Horizon 2020. So for Our Access Africa, we have in 2021, we have the first year for preparatory activities for establishment of Our Access Africa. So here in um, the platform of Our Access, you can see the, the tab of Our Access Worldwide and the top you can click on in Africa. In 2022, we have the official launch of Our Access Africa Hub. So here you can uh, sign up for free membership to Our Access Africa. Uh, some key indicators for African countries, we have uh, for that uh, African grantees, we have uh, five from South Africa, we have three from Morocco, 
three from Egypt, two from Algeria, one from Tunisia, one from Burkina Faso, one from Cameroon. You, have, you can see you have a lot of potential in Africa. For scientific publications, uh, so you can see here, uh, the, uh, we have uh, top five or top six countries in Africa. We have a lot of uh, uh, publications, scientific publications per, per year, and we have uh, uh, Egypt, uh, South Africa, Tunisia, Ethiopia, Nigeria, and many, many others. For uh, Horizon 2020 funded projects, we have um, South Africa with 61, 32 million euro, and we have Tunisia, we, uh, as associate country, we have 13, uh, 13 million euro, we have Morocco, Egypt, Ethiopia, and Nigeria, and for the participations, we have 305 organizations uh, have been participate in a project related to Horizon 2020 in, uh, uh, in Africa, uh, same for Tunisia and uh, other countries. So for 2022 events related to our hub, Air Access Africa, in March uh, 16, we have uh, organized with ERC, European Research Council, the two webinars, one in French and another one in English. Uh, and uh, after that, in March, uh, we have presented for, for the first time uh, Air Access Africa. Uh, and it, it will be a great opportunity to meet people and meet all uh, the stakeholders uh, related to uh, our access uh, in worldwide. In uh, June uh, 17, we have the first time we present physically uh, our access Africa for uh, all the community here in Tunisia. We have the uh, second day of networking day of the uh, Faculty of Medicine of SUS. After that, we have been in Morocco, uh, in Agadir, uh, for uh, Info Day in Eurozone Europe, and uh, practical workshops related to how to use platforms like Euro Access platform, like Funding and Tenders platform, and many others, how to profit to all the opportunities given by European Commission, given by Europe, how to uh, increase uh, the collaboration between Europe and Africa, and especially here in Morocco. So after that, we have organized the MSCI Africa webinars. We have uh, focused on postdoctoral fellowship, doctoral networks, and staff exchange. We have organized the first one in French with Agence uh, Universitaire de la Francophonie uh, in uh, July 6. And in July 8, we have organized the English one webinar. And, uh, and uh, well. So for the key partners in Africa, we have many key partners. We have uh, ERD, we have IWF, we have African Academy of Sciences, we have the African Union, we have the Réseau International des Instituts Pasteur, and many others. So here I will um, show you the promotional video for All Access Africa. Stay. <laughs> in Africa, but so with the rest of the world, so we'll continue with the, with the presentations and hopefully later on, uh, those who are, uh, who are joining us either online or on-site can ask their questions. We will make sure that we have time for that. So from Africa to yeah. Asia, please welcome my colleague, Dr. Susan Razzovasi. Thank you so much, Jenny. Yes. 
Um, as Jenny said, I'm Jenny's colleague in Southeast Asia, so I will spend five minutes just introducing you to the work of Euraxis Worldwide in ASEAN. ASEAN, of course, stands for Association of Southeast Asian Nations, which I guess is the equivalent to the European Union here in, in Europe. As you can see, it is a region that is incredibly diverse. It's a very uh, innovative, a very young, a very fast developing region. Uh, composed of 10 countries. Our key partners in the regions are Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. And I think interesting for you is that with the exception of Singapore, all of those are eligible for funding under Horizon Europe, which of course is important to know when you're thinking about initiating collaborations with these partners. Now, we're a team of two people. You can see us both here live, and uh, we are uh, in the region mostly, <laughs> most, of, most of our time. Jenny is currently based in the Philippines, but she uh, will move to Vietnam at some point, and I'm uh, in Singapore. Now, just to give you a little bit of uh, an overview of what our region is, we've been active in the region for 10 years, and we have really built a thriving community of research actors. We currently have over 20,000 international researchers and innovators amongst our partners. Uh, we also maintain active partnerships with over 300 stakeholders, and these are, of course, the research-intensive universities across our partner countries, the, uh, the important government uh, and funding agencies. We work a lot with industry partners as well. And I think a very important partner for us are the national chapters of the Global Young Academy. So we uh, are very much focusing also on working with the young and mobile research talent in the region. Um, we also support over 2,000 expatriate European researchers that are currently based in uh, Southeast Asia. A lot of them are in Singapore. They're working in both the public and the private sector. Um, as I said, many of them in Singapore, but also in other parts of Southeast Asia. And they are a very important interlocutor, I guess, also for you if you want to make connections uh, to potential partners in the region. What we offer you is access to a very highly innovative and fast developing research community or research communities. Um, and what we as Euraxis do in the region is really cater to the very strong demand for collaboration with European partners. Uh, because it is such a diverse um, region, we really have opportunity for collaboration from capacity building exercises all the way to very highly sophisticated scientific exchanges and collaboration in all scientific um, areas. We have over 40 events each year. Our aim is always to connect, of course, the researchers with each other, not only in Europe and ASEAN, but also within ASEAN, you can see our activities. Uh, you will hear it throughout the course of today's presentation, very much focused on uh, capacity building. We do a lot of work in career development. Our aim is to support researchers to become ready to join the international research community. We focus a lot on the MSCA and the ERC. For the MSCA, the staff exchange program is a very important um, program for collaboration. There's a lot of demand to join European institutions, to join consortia. Um, and of course, we're also now uh, focusing on Pillar 2, the um, research collaborative opportunities funded by Horizon Europe Pillar 2. So we do a lot of matchmaking activities as well. What we would like to do is to work more closely with you. And we would like to introduce you to a particular um, event format that we've uh, introduced in 2019. It was initially a, a COVID contingency measure, but it's become incredibly successful and it's called Meet My Lab. Uh, it is basically a virtual platform, a virtual matchmaking session with the aim of initiating inter-regional scientific partnerships. So we are demand driven, we're, we're meeting the demand either from our European collaborators or from our ASEAN stakeholders uh, and then we are inviting researchers to join us for these uh, usually 60 to 120 minute sessions. It's an opportunity for these people, for these researchers to showcase their infrastructure, their lab, they're inviting us in their lab, they're uh, providing very specific information about the concrete opportunities for, for research collaboration or they request the demand for research collaboration um, that they have. 
So um, it's an opportunity for you also to increase the visibility of your research project, your team and your institution in Southeast Asia. It's an opportunity to identify new collaborators, team members, um, etc. And of course, to build links to the research community in Southeast Asia. Just very quickly before I change, we have identified certain thematic focus areas. All of these are applicable across all the five partner countries. Uh, but these are the, uh, the focus areas that we are working on for 2022 and 2023. If you're interested, please do contact us and we will make it happen for you. More in the Q&A. Thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. So I'm actually a, you know, a product of the success of Euraxis uh, in the hub because I started as an Erasmus student and find out about the Marie Curie through the Euraxis portal. So there you go. So please co coordinate with Susan for the region. But from now, from ASEAN, we're going to bring you to Australia and New Zealand. And we have our colleague Nishant uh, with, this, uh, with this presentation. Nishant, please take it away. Hello, everyone. Greetings to all of you from Down Under. It is my pleasure to join you for the session on connecting Europe with the global research community with Euraxis Worldwide. I'm Nishan Sandilia, a regional coordinator of Euraxis Australia and New Zealand. We link researchers of Australia and New Zealand with Europe and provide free information about European research, career opportunities, international collaboration, and networking possibilities. We started our operations from Sydney in January of 2020, coinciding with the pandemic. However, we found a silver lining to this. The restrictions on traveling encouraged us to focus on virtual events and activities, which allowed us to reach a larger segment of researchers at a shorter span of time compared to what we could have reached under normal circumstances. We are currently 6,000 plus members in the hub and are very thankful to the research community in the region for embracing us with open arms. As daily activity, we inform the research community in the region with news and events from the European research landscape. At the current day and age where there is information overload, we focus on one news or event per day to avoid information fatigue to our members. We also publish quarterly newsletter and bi-weekly flash notes, which are delivered electronic to, electronically to the email address of our members so that they are on top of everything that is relevant and significant. Of course, a large part of what we do is to do with webinars. These webinars cover a wide range of funding opportunities, be it from the European Research Council grants or Mysuro's activity actions. We also partner with external institutions to bring sessions on publishing, career development, and the like. Of late, we have been able to resume physical missions to different parts of the region where we deliver European funding related information and practical sessions at research institutions. We are also working quite extensively with member states and the diaspora network in the region and are in the process of putting together a new initiative called the European Scientific Diaspora Australia. A characteristic of the hub is to organize a flagship event every year. In 2020, which was our first year of the hub's operation here, we organized the first ever European Research Day in the region. And this was done in collaboration with the EU delegation. The three-day event had a total of nine sessions and it was on a wide array of topics and was attended quite well by approximately 600 people. In 2021, our flagship event was the Horizon Europe launch in Australia and New Zealand. This was done in partnership with the European Commission and again the delegations in Australia and New Zealand. The Horizon Europe launch was followed by a detailed info day, each for Australia and New Zealand, which was again followed by a proposal writing camp, each for Australia and New Zealand. More than 2,000 people were involved in these events, which was a clear indication to us that there is an enough appetite of the research community to get involved with Europe. For 2022, a larger European Research Day is being planned for November, and we'd welcome any expression of interest from you on issues like PhD and postdoc opportunities in member states, science diplomacy, gender equality, publishing, career development, and the like please do not hesitate to get in touch. On the other hand, if there are opportunities that you would like to disseminate from your institution or your area of research to the community here in Australia and New Zealand, we'll be happy to help you. Since all of you are watching this on your laptop or phone, I'll encourage you to type your access Australia and New Zealand on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube. 
and follow us there. We try to bring relevant news and events on a timely and regular basis. With that, I wish you all the best for the rest of the conference. We will be happy to liaise you with the research community in the region and hence please do not hesitate to get in touch with me. I leave my email address for you on the screen. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Nishant. So from Australia and New Zealand, we're continuing our world tour and we go now to China. So China, of course, is a huge country. We have two representatives there. I've already uh, introduced Haldor, but the person who will be presenting uh, on their behalf is Ms. Anna Facinetti. Please, Anna, the floor, the room is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jamie, and good morning, everybody. You should see my presentation now. I'm Anna Facchinetti from your access China. And yeah, as I said, I'm here with Hallerberg connected from Beijing, where we had had an office since 2009. So we have been running activities in China for more than a decade now, and we can count on uh, more than 7,000 members, which we are very proud of. So uh, I want to uh, just quickly introduce uh, uh, to you what we do at your access China before getting uh, into one of uh, more specific activities that we do that I think will be uh, of interest for those uh, in our audience that are uh, you know willing to explore the opportunities of engaging with the research institutions in China. So uh, uh, what we do in China, uh, we uh, mainly try to animate the network of researchers uh, and we support them in staying connected between China and Europe. So we work with Chinese researchers mainly promoting the European research area, its, its excellence and its research uh, opportunities, its funding opportunities. But we also work, uh, and we have been focusing on this, especially in the last few years, a lot uh, with the European researchers that are based in China. We don't have large numbers that they might have in other hubs like Singapore, but still this is like a quite interesting uh, uh, research community to look at and to work in, I think, especially in a country such as China uh, that, uh, you know, offers uh, a research uh, and innovation landscape that is, uh, uh, is of interest, but can be hard to navigate. So one of the developments of our work uh, with European researchers in China has been the establishment in the last uh, um, less than two years of this uh, six thematic networks that you see on my slide. So we can count now on the six groups of researchers that work in research fields that belong to these main six areas that we have identified. These are groups uh, of like 40 to 100 researchers, more or less. Uh, they are based at Chinese institutions uh, and uh, uh, work together. Um, I mean, mainly the, the objective of, uh, of these uh, groups is, of course, to uh, provide benefits to its members, uh, so uh, to share uh, information internally, share best experience, uh, uh, make sure that uh, uh, the visibility of the individual members and of the group is increased. Uh, but of course, one of the main goals uh, and one of the main interests uh, of these European researchers is, is also that of uh, um, enlarge the opportunities of engaging uh, externally with uh, you know, European research actors that are interested in China and of course also vice versa. So to engage with uh, uh, Chinese actors, they are interested in connecting to Europe. So uh, I think this is like a, a very uh, interesting, uh, um, uh, you know, point of view uh, to look from when thinking of engaging with China. Uh, these groups of researchers that, that work from inside the Europe, uh, Chinese institutions, but uh, European nationals so with the European also uh, mindset. They are like well connected and understand very well how uh, research work at these institutions and can navigate the landscape very well. So uh, in my next slide, I just want to uh, show you uh, quickly an example of one of these networks. Uh, that is that of uh, uh, European researchers working in biology and medicine. 
uh, with them, we have set up a, a website that you can visit, uh, nerbimec.eu. Uh, there, there's uh, their profile um, button to get in touch. So with these networks, uh, we uh, try to um, organize targeted events, uh, also join events, and uh, you know, um, since matchmaking activities were mentioned in the in the slide uh, before, uh, that is also something that uh, I think is very meaningful for uh, these researchers to do. And um, so yes, uh, I I want to conclude. The, uh, my presentation by inviting those uh, who are interested in uh, exploring opportunities in China to visit us at china.uraccess.org, maybe become a member that is free and that allows you to stay updated on all uh, the publications and the events uh, information sessions that we are organizing and to uh, think of uh, this uh, uh, thematic networks uh, as a you know, priority channel to get connected uh, to uh, you know China and the research field that is of interest to you via the support of your access in China. And thank you. This is uh, the end of my presentation. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you as well, Haldor. So you see there opportunities also in the scientific networks, the thematic networks that you've created. I think that's really, really interesting as well. But now we are continuing. Uh, we're going to travel a little bit, little bit further uh, from China. We are now going to Latin America, the Caribbean, and Brazil. And we have three representatives there, uh, Charlotte Gravitz. We also have Victoria Bonarova, who is also our liaison officer, and of course, Daniel Costa. So please... Ladies and gentlemen, please take it away. The room Good morning, is... everyone. Welcome to our short video about Your Access Latin America and the Caribbean. Your Access LAC was established in 2013 as Your Access Brazil, and then in 2020 expanded to cover five priority countries in the region. These countries are Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, and Chile. With its two offices and the team of three people, your access lock caters to the research and innovation community in the region by providing information on European funding opportunities, career development workshops, and animating networks of European and local researchers and stakeholders. We currently have over 25,000 members. My name is Victoria, and I am based in the office in Bogota, Colombia, mainly responsible for Colombia and Mexico. I am Charlotte, and I'm based in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, focusing on Argentina, Brazil, and Chile. Charlotte, tell us more uh, about the activities of Your Access Luck, uh, where we engage with our research community. Actually, there is a very strong and long-lasting scientific collaboration between Latin America and the Caribbean and Europe. Short-term and long-term mobility of researchers are an important driver of these EU-like research and innovation partnerships. Our job is to make sure that interested researchers have the information and the support they need to undertake a stay in Europe, but also that they make the most out of European funding to bring Europe-based researchers to the region, to Latin America and the Caribbean. This is what the Marie Sklodowska Curie postdoctoral fellowships offers, so we promote it very actively in the region. We also work very much with the Marie Sklodowska Curie alumni in the region. There are already three chapters created in Argentina, Brazil, and Chile. And I would like to add that we continue the facilitation of these Marie Curie Alumni Association chapters in the region. And right now we are helping the creation of the MCIA Mexico chapter and also the chapter which will be called Andean. Uh, and it will involve uh, the countries such as Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador. Recently, your access lack helped uh, creating the Association of European Researchers in Brazil. In these European researchers launched a series of webinars in English to explain how the education and research landscapes are organized in the country and how to welcome 
visiting researchers. So all these to show that the mutual interest and the importance of a balanced uh, mobility flows. Victoria, what, where is the greatest potential for collaboration between the, new, the two regions? The priorities of the LAC region that match with the European Commission's vision under the current framework program called Horizon Europe are as follows. Health, environment, including climate change, innovation, soil, oceans, and aerospace. So there are plenty of research areas that are both in innovation and research where you as European research actors can collaborate with the different actors in the area. If you want to increase your visibility and collaboration with Latin America and the Caribbean, we invite you to contact us at the email address that you see on the screen, luck at youraccess.net, and also follow us on social media. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, ladies, uh, for that. I love this interaction between the two of them. I feel like I'm watching, you know, this is one of these famous shows in Latin America. So thank you so much. So from there, so we took a, a trip to Latin America and the Caribbean and Brazil. We're going back to Asia. We're going now to India, a huge country. We have two representatives there. We have Elida Jakobsen. And of course, we have Samrat Kumar, who will be giving the presentation. Samrat, take it away, please. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone, and good morning. Um, not sure if it's still morning. I think it's lunchtime now in Leiden. So um, yeah, let me first thank um, our dear colleagues, uh, Jenny, Susanne, and Tomas for organizing such a wonderful session and providing us the opportunity to present briefly our hubs. I'm Samrat, as Jenny already said. I'm the country coordinator of Eurexis in India. And we have been supporting researchers from India interested in a career uh, with Europe uh, since 2011. Uh, and as uh, Jenny already said, our team consists of two people here in India. And we have currently 21,000 members whom we provide with regular and firsthand information on EU research innovation funding and collaboration opportunities. We further, similar to the other hubs, uh, conduct uh, career development and science communication trainings for our community. And we conduct uh, quite a few workshops and events on topics related to EU-India research and innovation cooperation. Now, this year marks the 60th anniversary of EU-India diplomatic relations. And the strategic partnership in research and innovation has been an important aspect of these relations. In recent years, there have been co-investments in the areas of healthcare, water, energy, food, and nutrition, primarily under the EU-India co-funding partnership under Horizon 2020. Both sides in this partnership aim to strengthen in the coming years the cooperation on climate change, sustainable urban development, green transport, e-mobility, clean energy, circular and bioeconomy. These are, of course, topics which are globally relevant. But India and the EU also share mutual interest in the reciprocal mobility of students, researchers, and professionals. Now, the participation of Indian researchers in EU mobility programs, such as the Maurice Kodos Curry Actions or the European Research Council, has been very high and very successful in the past year. Indian nationals are the largest beneficiaries outside Europe of the MSCA PhD and postdoc fellowships and rank third in the uh, recipients of ERC grants. Now, Euraxis India, we here are working very closely with EU stakeholders and EU member states in creating awareness about the research mobility opportunities in Europe and about EU India co-funded calls. We give support to individual researchers, candidates, and provide assistance to institutions who are looking for partners here. And how do we do that? Through organizing info and networking sessions, both physically and online, conducting thematic sessions on areas and topics which are important to the EU-India strategic partnership in research and innovation, and partnering with European and Indian institutions that share similar interests in international talent mobility 
and Research and Innovation Cooperation. Now, recognizing the mutual benefit of exchange and mobility of talent, the Indian government has an ambitious plan to strengthen the internationalization of higher education and research institutions in the country. In the coming years, various schemes will be implemented to improve the quality of teaching and research and to increase the number of foreign students and researchers in the country. India has a new national science technology and innovation policy, which includes objectives and values similar to Horizon Europe, the EU's research innovation framework program, and similar to the European research area communication. The updated policy framework conditions addresses issues such as open science, research integrity, ethics, and non-discrimination and gender. Now, if you're interested in knowing more about EU-India Research Innovation Cooperation, student and researcher mobility actions, or like to explore possible avenues of collaborating with Indian stakeholders, then please feel free to contact us on this email address. I hope it's visible in the background. And with this, I say thank you so much for your attention and wishing you a great day at the conference. Thank you so much, Samrat, for that. So a lot of opportunities again to collaborate also in India. We're flying again. We're moving now to, to North America and we have with us two representatives from North America. We have Daria Karakan and of course the person who will give the presentation for today, Jackson Howard uh, on video, I believe. So both of you, please take the room. Thank you. Hello, I am from the North America hub of your access worldwide. My name is Jackson Howard. And my colleague, Dr. Daria Bleetner Karajan, and I are based in Washington, D.C., covering the United States and Canada. Your Access North America is a network of about 8,900 researchers from all disciplines and at all career levels. We promote ERA, the European Research Area, and highlight the continent as a research and living destination. We also promote Horizon Europe heavily with a strong focus on Marie Skodov's Decree Actions and European Research Council grants. We leverage webinars to reach a wide audience across our local time zones, and we are increasingly attending annual conferences and meetings and do our best to leverage in-person and virtual activities, as well as share and connect through social media. We work closely with the EU delegations to the US and Canada, as well as European embassies in Washington and Ottawa. Many European consulates throughout the continent also engage in science diplomacy and education promotion. So with their support, we also have strong visibility throughout the two countries. Our hot topics include transatlantic research cooperation, partnerships between institutions on both sides of the Atlantic, as well as robust mobility in both directions. The US and Canada both send many researchers over to Europe through the funding schemes under Pillar 1 of Horizon Europe. They are also a very popular destination for European researchers taking advantage of the MSCA Global Fellowships. With this in mind, we also work closely with the Marie Curie Alumni Association's North America chapter. Another hot topic, as we mentioned before, is science diplomacy. We have an ongoing series called Virtual Coffee Chat with the Science Diplomat, where we interview the science counselor or science attache of different European embassies to learn about their career path, their country's research landscape, bilateral cooperation, and more. And we constantly showcase great initiatives in both regions, such as the EU's Science Diplomacy Alliance, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, Barcelona's SciTech Diplo Hub, the U.S. National Science Policy Network, Canadian Research Funding Institutions, Recurring Science Slams, One-Off Science Diplomacy Events and Projects, and much more. We have two big flagship events. Our first one is European Research Day, where we highlight European research and invite funding agencies from both sides of the Atlantic to promote Europe as a hub for research and innovation. Our second is the annual meeting of the European Scientific Diasporas in North America, an important annual gathering where we convene leaders of researcher diaspora networks, their members, diplomats, nonprofits, and the private sector under a common theme and to hear challenges and success stories from these groups that are simultaneously different and diverse while also having similar dynamics keying national networks in North America. Through all of these activities and initiatives, we work to fulfill our mandates to support researcher mobility and career development, as well as strengthen scientific collaboration between Europe and North America. We hope that regardless of where you are based, you will connect with us and get ready for new career development sessions with expert trainers, networking events, info sessions on EU funding opportunities, and more. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jackson, for that, uh, for North America. So again, a lot of opportunities there. So if, if you want to coordinate or to collaborate uh, in research or innovation in North America, please uh, contact uh, Daria and uh, Jackson. 
for this. But now we're bringing back the conversations to the room on site. We have a presentation, but actually about Korea. So to talk about Korea, we have Dr. Tomasz Wietzwolski. Please take the floor. Thank you very much. I'm especially happy to be here on site because I'm terrible at all those online events. And uh, while listening to those presentations, I keep wondering what's the rationale behind the order of our presentations, because we go from uh, Asia to South America, then back to India, then back to North America. I just hope that my colleagues know what they're doing in, in, in the ordering of this. So I'm Tomas, and I'm based in Korea, in, in Seoul. I represent the Iraxis Initiative in, uh, in uh, Northeast Asia, in Korea. You basically have more ideas about wh who we are, what we do. We promote uh, career development. We cr uh, promote the mobility of researchers from our respected hubs. Uh, some of our hubs are regional, North America, Northeast uh, Asia, uh, South America. Some of our hubs are um, country-oriented, like China, India, Korea, Japan. So I'm alone in, uh, in Korea. Uh, Korea is geographically distant from Europe, but it's a so-called like-minded country. <coughs> it's a liberal democracy with 50 million people. And it's one of the uh, seven countries in the world that has more than <coughs> 50 million population with uh, 30,000 USD uh, per capita. And even according to the very uh, European, European centric uh, standards, European centric um, methodology, uh, according to the European um, Innovation Scoreboard, Korea is the most innovative country in the world. <coughs> so Europe recognizes Korea, Korea is there. It's uh, in the agenda, and once again, it's like-minded country, so, um, so the interest uh, to cooperate uh, between European partners and <coughs> Korean partners are, are there, and Korea is one of the um, biggest spender of the GDP for research and innovation, sometimes it's Israel, sometimes it's, it's Korea. So you know us, we also promote in our hubs, in our respected hubs, uh, Europe as a research destination, and when we refer to Europe, it's so-called European Research Area. So 27 European member states plus 16 associated countries. So every time we say Europe, please keep in mind that it's not limited only to European member states, but all surrounded countries like um, Egypt, <coughs> Norway, or um, Ukraine, for example. Uh, Euraxis activities are aligned with uh, European strategy for research and uh, development. We, we, we work together with um, Horizon Europe, with the promotion campaign of Horizon Europe, very closely with uh, so many times mentioned already Marie Skłodowska Kiri Actions, MSCA, and European Research Council. So we promote European policy on a high level in, in, in general and also uh, back in the ground for uh, individual researchers. I strongly encourage you to visit our portal wherever you are, uh, in whenever respected hubs you are. You can easily find uh, either job in Europe or funding opportunity for you or scholarship in Europe. You can customize our search engine. Uh, you can put your uh, your um, your specialization, your career stage, and you will find either jobs or fundings available for you in Europe or from for European partners. This works for every hub, not only for Korea, but of course we all have our respected dedicated um, home pages in our hubs. I run um, Euraxis Korea uh, page. I upload uh, some kind of news almost every day. Uh, and at the end of the week, if you subscribe to, to uh, my membership, you will receive so-called flash note, was mentioned briefly, which is basically a newsletter with all the information from the, uh, all over the week um, put together and send it, uh, sent to you. So please, I strongly encourage you, even if you are not in Korea, and if, if you are not necessarily interested in Korea, you will definitely find some interesting information about European funding, so European uh, research policy in, in my newsletter. Once again, uh, Korea as a like-minded country, a country signed as a first partner in the world, the so-called uh, free strategic agreements with Europe. And what is hot issue right now, Korea entered the, the phase of negotiating association agreement with uh, the Horizon Europe, which basically means that Korea will be able, Korean partners will be able to receive direct fundings from Horizon Europe. The process is long, <coughs> it will take some time. <coughs> but at one point, um, Korea will be there as an associated country. So basically, it will become close to the European research area countries. Once again, I promote mobility of researcher based in Korea in all disciplines of all nation nationalities. <coughs> it's not a brain brain rain. It's a, it's a promotion of exchange, mobility, and cooperation, both on individual level and on um, institutional level. Thank you very much. I will skip this. I know we have Q&A also to address. 
uh, please contact me whenever you have uh, any questions or, or comments. I'm happy to, uh, to actively uh, work with you. Thank you. Thank you, Tomas. <laughs> I had an interesting conversation. Thank you for the claps, by the way, um, with uh, one researcher because uh, he is fascinated with, uh, with Korean pop culture and is particularly interested in studying about BTS and Blackpink. So we'll, we'll, talk, we'll tackle that later after all of the presentations. He's I'll invited to Korea. Please bring him in. <laughs> so I don't know if anyone is, uh, is also interested in uh, uh, pop culture, Korean pop culture, but certainly I am. So I am also a fan of BTS. So now we are going to stay closer because you said uh, so from Korea, we're jumping to uh, to Japan, and we have our colleague Judith Magyar to give the presentation. Judith, please. Good morning, everyone. I'm Judith Erika Magyar, country representative for Eurocentric Japan, and a good afternoon to those of you who are watching this webinar, this event from a different time zone, in a different time zone. Let me say a few words about our hub. Let's start with patterns of collaboration. We have several partners that we proudly interact with. We are most grateful for their help and assistance, and we hope that we can continue along these lines. You can see the non-exhaustive list. Let us focus on two of our most distinguished uh, organizations that help us the most. We signed a memorandum of collaboration with the Japan Science and Technology Agency a few years ago, and a memorandum of understanding with Kobe University. Kobe University co-organized an event with us just a few weeks ago. The topic of this event was the current state of smart cities. It was very successful. And if you would like to check out the details, please visit, visit our portal. We also have uh, upcoming events with JST. We will see if um, we can organize separate ERC events in the autumn. If you would like to apply for this grant, we recommend that you have a look at our portal yet again. With reference to other strategic partners, I really would like to emphasize how grateful we again are to the EU Japan Center for Industrial Collaboration. We are going to have a um, co-organized webinar with them on the 20th of July. The topic is Academia to Industry, startups, patents, best practices. So if you would like to hear from experts on how to file patents, how to transfer from academia to industry, how to actually have a startup, how to start a startup, then do tune in. The registration link is already on the portal. Still in July, we are going to have yet another event. The Falling Walls Lab is coming to Tokyo. You may still submit your video. You only need a three minute submission and um, you can join us online. It's not a hybrid event. So if you live far away, feel free to tune in. We will be very happy to welcome you. Let's just uh, say a few words about the Marie Curie Sklodowska uh, Fellowship. We actually had a webinar just again a few weeks ago, actually a month ago. If you would like to hear these practical hints and tips, please check the website and the recording is on YouTube. The application deadline is the 14th of September, so you still have time. Unique events, please check out our Euroaccess Me webinar series where you can actually talk about your own research topic in only 15 minutes and um, gain more visibility. Another unique event is the Rickshaw Roadshow. We regularly organize these regional outreaches where we focus on EU-Japan partnerships in different regions in Japan. Last but not least, let's just have a look at some numbers, how we are growing. And if you would like to grow with us, please join our network, sign up on our mailing list for our mailing list and follow us on Twitter, 
Facebook, join us on LinkedIn or Line. Thank you for listening. I'm looking forward to seeing you online or in person sometime. Goodbye. Thank you, Judith. So now we would love to hear from you, especially those who are on site and online. Uh, your questions, please, uh, to us. Uh, let us know what you think about this and your ideas as well. I will give the floor now to my colleague who will uh, facilitate this discussion, please. Yes, thank so. you so much. I mean, we had two questions here on the slider. We had a question, how do you define or measure the number of your access members per region or country? Now, we usually just look at our database, our um, uh, the, the contacts that are receiving the regular information that you send. And as you've heard, we are very active in informing our researchers. We send out pretty much weekly flash notes, funding opportunities, uh, events, etc. Uh, we very much rely on your contributions because we are basically your presence in the world and as you've seen we're everywhere if you would like us to advertise any of your uh, events or funding opportunities or policy changes please contact us and we will then blast them out to the networks that we have a second question we had is how detailed sorry is uh, the consultation that you provide to mobile researchers now we have a, a, we're lucky we have quite a few people that are either N NCPs, like Jenny herself is an MSCA NCP. So we provide um, reasonably detailed consultations uh, related to the MSCA postdoc fellowships, the staff exchanges, and also the ERC starting grants. I think Thomas wants to add something. Again, this situation differs from hub to hub because for example, ASEAN has 10,000 members of its community. In Korea, I work closely with less than 1,000. So simply speaking, yes, I do. I do offer personal consultations in so far I am capable to do so. So I cannot commit myself and promise you that I will provide you individual consultation. But in general, I receive a couple of proposals every year and I try to do my best to, to comment on them. Although I'm not an expert and not an NCP, but I always try to actively support and give some comments to individual application of individual researchers. Thank you, we have two more questions. We've been told we have to finish on time. Does anyone have any questions? Otherwise, maybe if you just allow me just to quickly summarize, I mean, you've seen we are in we are in the world. We're doing incredibly uh, many activities, but our key goal is to really to promote the activities that you have on offer and to build collaborations with uh, our European partners that are here in the room and that are joining us online. So whenever you have any ideas or you have requests or you have suggestions, please reach out to any of us across the world and we really would like to make it happen for you. Jenny. The last word. The last word is mine. So, well, you, the world is your oyster, as they say. So please contact us. So through your access worldwide, you can communicate with any researcher, any business from all the, around the world. And we really want to promote European values, of course, but we want you to get involved in this. So uh, please uh, get in touch with us. Um, we are ready for you. And of course, after this meeting, those of you who are here with us on site, please, we can have conversations on the site. We would like to thank, of course, the organizers of ESSO for inviting your access worldwide, our colleagues that are joining us on site as well. Thank you so much and have a good day. Thank you.